Hey everybody, it's Pastor Matt here and so glad to be with you uh, today. Uh, as you can tell, I'm in the middle school chapel and I will admit it's very weird to be in here uh, without all of you. Uh, I miss you guys so much and uh, glad though that we can uh, continue uh, growing in, in God's word and, and teaching that and, and so uh, excited to be with you today and uh, look forward to it, okay? Uh, we are in week two of Psalm 23, and we're really excited about this, uh, this chapter in the Bible. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch Connor's message last week, I would really encourage you to go back onto YouTube and watch that. He did a great job of setting up the chapter for us. And, uh, you know, this psalm is such a foundational truth for us and helping us understand the truth of God's character and his heart for you and for me. And so we think it's such a good opportunity for us to, to pour this chapter into us uh, for some growth. And so let's go ahead and uh, open up our Bibles, if you aren't already there, to Psalm 23. Uh, we're going to read both verse 1 and verse 2, so let's go ahead and, uh, and do that right now, okay? So let's go ahead and get there. Here's what it says. Verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2 says, He makes me lie down. In green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. God, we are so thankful for today and the opportunity to open up uh, the Bible and hear uh, from you this morning. God, I pray that you would work in our hearts, uh, that you would change our minds, that you would help us to grow uh, more in love with you and to trust you more and more with our lives. In your name, amen. I love this word picture of green pastures and still waters. And I think what it does is it really helps us understand that Jesus leads his sheep with love and care. Jesus leads his sheep with love and care. And to understand that a little bit, I want us to look at what Jesus says about himself in John chapter 10. He says, I am the good shepherd. Now, sometimes for us, we kind of don't understand what the word good means. Like if we were to think of uh, words that mean the most, right? We might think of good, better, best, right? Or amazingly awesome over here. Good is just kind of like, okay, yeah. Did you have a cheeseburger? Oh yeah, it was good, you know. Now, that's not the understanding of the word good here whenever we hear the word good spoken about Jesus or God. Uh, good is to help us understand that it's perfect, it's, it's holy, like there's nothing better than that. And so with that frame of reference, when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he's really saying, I am the best shepherd, I am the perfect shepherd, I am the, the number one shepherd above all other shepherds, there is no other shepherd that is as good as I am. Every other shepherd really is a substitute, is a lesser uh, version of a shepherd than what Jesus is. And that's so easy, but hard for us to understand sometimes. Um, it's very important that Jesus will always lead us in a perfect way. He will always lead us in godly care. Now, maybe it's not always the easiest path that we're on, but we're always under his care, under his watchful eye. The shepherd is always looking for the protection and care of the sheep that are underneath, uh, you know, his staff. And to help us kind of understand this a little bit, I think it's, it's good for us to, to think about and, and realize the the kind of the context, the understanding of what like a shepherd in this day and age would have been like, right? That, uh, you know, we live in Washington here where there's lots of green grass and all those kind of things like that. But if you look at the land in Israel, right? Like this is kind of a picture of, of what it would look like, right? You have that mountain with, and those are all rocks on those mountains. That's the, the, there's some trees there, but a lot of it's dirt. It's, it's kind of brown grass. There's not a whole lot going on there, but there's these little kind of oasises of, of green grass and of water. And the shepherd would, would take them different places to find the green grass and the water that the sheep could drink. And when they found those places, right, it was a place of protection, a place of care, 
that the shepherd led them to. Now, maybe they had to uh, go a meandering path or, or, or go long distance, but they still got to the place where the shepherd provided for them what they needed. See, sheep really, um, they, they have a hard time caring for themselves. Uh, they're not the, the highest IQ animal in the, the world that God created. Uh, they're pretty defenseless. Uh, they're slow. And so sheep really need a shepherd all the time to really help make sure that they don't die. Um, you know, the world of a sheep is filled with danger. There's rocks and slippery landscape all the time. If you look over there, there's all those rocks and those mountains over there. There's there's cliff edges that they could fall over. There's rushing rivers that can sweep them away. Um, sheep even get frightened really easily and have heart attacks and just die, you know, kind of type thing. Um, and there's also wolves and different animals that love to have a sheep kebab for dinner every night. And so the shepherd is always there looking and watching, protecting, leading, guiding them, taking them away from danger and towards safety. That's the kind of the, the image, the, the, the reality of a shepherd and what Jesus also does for us. See, the world that we live in is really the same, isn't it? We make a decision based upon sometimes our own thinking, our own understanding, and, and we start to live our life in some way. And maybe you've had it said to you that, hey, you're kind of going down a slippery slope here. Uh, that can be very true for us where we start to trust in our own understanding and not in God's understanding. We kind of steer away kind of on the outside of where the shepherd is, is at and we start to kind of get ourselves into trouble. Or it could be that we get as, you know, as close as we can to something, right? We know that the Bible says to not do this, right? But we start to get really, really close to it. Maybe it's allowing ourselves to watch different things on TV or different movies that, oh, it's not the best, but you know what, it's, it's not horrible, right? And we start to kind of get really close to things. And all of a sudden, what we find ourselves is that the, the ground gives way and we've kind of fallen into temptation in our lives. And, and we've allowed that to, to get us. And maybe it's the, the rushing river of the world's popular opinions and ways of living that, that you know, man, looks so enticing. It looks so good, man. That, oh, look at all that, that fresh water over there. What we don't realize is that that water is going to drown us. It's going to take us under. You know, a sheep, when it falls into a, a rushing river, A, they can't swim. Uh, B, all that wool uh, gets completely full of water and just takes them down. And I think in the same way, that is true for us. We start to allow our minds to think in ways that the world values instead of how the shepherd is leading and guiding us. I think there's a lot of fear right now that maybe some of us find ourselves in. The uncertainty of, of kind of the what ifs of life right now. And we can allow those to paralyze us in some ways. Um, and then there's also the enemy that's out there. Uh, throughout all of this, the enemy is looking for, uh, for some sheep. And that's what it says in 1 Peter 5 8. Look at what, it, what the warning is it says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Just like sheep have wolves and lions and, and you know, other predators looking to have a snack, our enemy, God's enemy, the devil, is looking for ways to take us out. Right? The thief, the lion comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But we have to remember that Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. That's what it says in the verse right before it says, I'm the good shepherd. It says that Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. That his love and his care for his sheep is so great. We have to remember that verse, the Lord is my shepherd in verse one. Remembering that our shepherd is a good shepherd and that we need to listen to follow his leading and guiding, not be on the outskirts of of the, the flock, but be as close to the shepherd as we possibly can, enjoying the rest and satisfaction that we can absolutely find and experience when trusting the shepherd and staying close to him. Not only does the shepherd keep us safe, not only does he watch over us with the best love and care, and he's the, the best, the good shepherd to us, 
we also can, I think, pick out of this verse that Jesus provides the best nourishment for our souls. Jesus provides for us absolutely what we need in our lives to grow as sheep that are well nourished. The Bible is really a green pasture for us to graze in. God's word is the best source for us to fill up spiritually. It provides us what we need so we can live this Christian life with faith, with hope, with love, with, with a servant's heart for Jesus and for others. I love what it says in 1 Timothy 4, 6. It says this, being nourished with the words of the faith. Shouldn't that be what's being said of us and, and our desire, right? That we're being nourished with the words of the faith. And, I, and when I think of nourished, right, I think of, you know, not just taking a little nibble, right? Not just on Sunday mornings, we're hearing a message, right? Or, or something like that. Or maybe, you know, in our life group, there's, there's, you know, we're having our Bible teaching and we're getting that. But nourished, I believe, really has the understanding of us consistently and constantly filling ourselves with it. You know, it'd be like, you know, having a whole plate of food before us, you know, a nice steak and baked potato and vegetables and those kind of things like that. And like, oh, you know, I'm going to take one little piece and oh man, I'm done. No, that's not the picture that we have here. Nourished really means that we would have our fill. So that way we are full of what God's word has to say. For a sheep, right? It'd be like green grass versus brown grass. Uh, maybe the brown grass has a little bit of nutrients, right? Uh, it fills their bellies, but doesn't really satisfy. The green grass is lush and it has uh, lots of nutrients and vitamins and, and all of those kind of things in there, and it satisfies them. And so when they're in these green pastures, right, it's not just the safety of the shepherd that, uh, that is being provided to them, right? It's the nourishment of the grass that the shepherd also provides that, that gives them what they need. And in the same way, our souls thirst for Jesus. When it talks about the, the water, I love what it says here in John chapter seven. It says, if anyone thirsts, and this is Jesus, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. See, when you go without water, your body gets thirsty, doesn't it? And your soul, when it goes without Jesus, it gets thirsty. Your body was made to live on water. It requires water. And your soul was made to be in partnership and unity with God. And as humans, we have a tendency to stray from the shepherd to seek our nourishment from other places. And when we look at our lives, we can probably see pretty clearly if our nourishment comes from the shepherd. Now, while we're not perfect, uh, many times our lives will reflect it or not, right? Sometimes we can show uh, being quickly angered. We can, we can show selfishness in our lives and you know, how we use our time. Are, you know, are we using our time for godly activities, for, for things that will grow us? Reading the, our Bibles, right? Spending time worshiping him, talking to him in prayer. How are we using our time? You know, are you finding yourselves right now just on Netflix and on your Xbox or on your phone or, or doing other things, but yet, man, you have all this time right now, but are you staying close to the shepherd right now? Is there an attitude of maybe disobedience uh, to your parents right now? How are you treating your brothers and your sisters and your other family members right now during this time? What are you watching on TV? What's the language coming out of your mouth? All of those things can be indicators of where you're getting your nourishment from and how close you're staying to the shepherd. Now, what I found is that if you aren't feeding from the pasture, if, if, if you aren't uh, if you aren't living uh, in the, the pasture that God has for you, that the shepherd has led you to, if you, aren't, uh, if you aren't drinking from the living water that Jesus readily provides for you, 
it's really hard to experience the safety and rest and satisfaction of the shepherd's care because there's this disconnect. It'd be like this, maybe. It'd be like going to Disneyland. And when you're there, you walk up and you're, you're really excited about it. And maybe that's kind of like the, the green pasture, right? You're, you're kind of there and it's awesome. But the thing is, is you don't go any rides. All your family members do, but, but you don't. You don't watch the parade. You don't watch the nighttime fireworks. You don't eat any of the food. You don't get any souvenirs. You don't even grab a map. You just are there, right? You would probably say that Disneyland is pretty dumb because of the experience that you had. Well, duh, you probably would say that. Uh, and, and that's because for us, right, there's not just being in the place, but also living it out. Some of us like the idea of the shepherd being with us. But yet sometimes we don't put that into practice in our life. It's not enough just to say, Jesus, I love you. Our actions have to flow out of that. It's not just say, great, I'm, I'm saved. I get to go to heaven. It's about dedicating your life to being close to the shepherd and following his voice. It's a way of life. We need rest and nourishment. Sheep need rest and nourishment. They're not separate. And maybe today, maybe you found or you find yourself dissatisfied or you've lost the passion that you have had for Jesus in the past. And it could be very well that you have assumed just kind of being close to the shepherd is, is good enough. But you haven't been listening to the shepherd's voice and you haven't been feeding on God's word. You haven't experienced the living water that Jesus provides. And maybe you're actually starving and dehydrated today, spiritually speaking. Through these verses, we learn that Jesus is the best, perfect, he's the good shepherd. And we know that as sheep, we need to follow his voice and have the nourishment that he provides. See, if a sheep does not follow the shepherd's voice, does not eat where the shepherd takes him, does not drink where the shepherd takes him, most likely the sheep is going to die. The sheep is going to fall off a cliff. The sheep is going to be dehydrated. The sheep is going to be eaten by wolves. So the question for us today is this. What kind of sheep are you today? Are you resting in the peace that comes from Jesus being your savior, being your shepherd, the good shepherd to you? Are you actively following and listening to his voice? Or maybe there's a lack of trust that you have in the shepherd. Maybe some spiritual laziness has taken over. Maybe you've allowed yourself to be on the outside of the flock. Maybe you've kind of isolated yourself. Are you grazing on that dead grass that the world offers or rock, walking in rocky soil? close to cliffs where there's danger? Are you allowing yourself to be a target of the enemy? And so my challenge to us is this, is very simple, that we would trust Jesus as our shepherd. Would you trust Jesus as your shepherd because he is worthy to be trusted because of his great love for you? You know, that verse that we read where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The next part of that says that he will lay down his life for his sheep. And that's exactly what he did for you and for me. That he was willing to lay his life down to protect you, to provide for you a way to have your sins forgiven, to be re reunited with God and for Jesus to be your shepherd. So that way you don't have to go through life alone and you can experience eternity with him in heaven. I pray that today that you would trust Jesus as your shepherd, whether that is uh, making a decision in faith uh, today to say, Jesus, 
I repent of my sins and I want you to be my shepherd. Or maybe Jesus has been your shepherd, but you've been on the outskirts today. Maybe it's time to get really, really close to the shepherd this morning. Let me pray for us and then we'll be done. God, I thank you so much for our time together today. God, I pray that you would, uh, that you would in our minds, in our hearts, remind us to be close to you. God, that we would take those steps necessary in our lives so that way we can be close to the shepherd because you are good and perfect. In your name, amen. Well, it has been really great to be with you today. I hope that you uh, join us next week for uh, verse three in Psalm 23. We'll see you guys later.